Some people may think, when they listen to my story, you're an idiot. You had a stress-induced reaction. You were going through the unbearable, and so your mind played a trick on you. It was a way of you coping. I know that I sound like the exact kind of person I used to dismiss as crazy or foolish. But if I am a fool, I'm a fool with my truth. And that's enough for me. When I look back, I feel like I was just a twig on the bow of a mighty stream, being happily swept along. I was taking my daughter Kate to her first college interview. She was going to study art at St. Martin's. <laughs> just like the song. I was so proud of her. I had this feeling that we were becoming less and less like father and daughter and more like friends again. We had a bit of a rough patch in our relationship a few years back. A normal teenage rebellion stuff. Days like that day were so very precious. Kate's future was so bright. She was going to change the world in some way. I felt sure of that. We had time to take in a few sights before the interview that day. We went to Buckingham Palace and <laughs> scoffed at the wealth and the privilege. We took our last photo together. She looks beautiful. She has her mother's eyes and my mother's smile. I'm glad I have it. The two of us on a cold January day. My arm around her, her cheeks rosy and red with the cold. She was wearing the scarf I bought her for Christmas. She had her heart set on taking a travel year or studying abroad for one of the coming years. Paris, to be exact. She was full of wonder and romance when she would talk about it. Her eyes would glaze over and she'd get a far-off look in her eye, like she knew where she was going. Like this mighty current of life was going to take her there, and it was all, all just a matter of time. The journey was irrelevant. She knew where she was going. But she never arrived. Kate had a heart attack on the London Underground Piccadilly line while we were travelling to her interview. We were just chatting. She put a hand to her chest. She gave me a look. A look that I will never forget. Her eyes wide. Her mouth pressed in a tight circle. As if she had so much to tell me. But no time. As if all the air in her lungs had become solid and was about to explode. She got it from me. Well, not me, my father, her grandfather, the one that she never met. It skips a generation. There was a weakness in the veins leading to her heart. It burst and she was gone. The thing is, there's two me's. The me before Kate died, and the me after Kate died. The me before Kate died was consumed with things of little meaning. My ego, my pride, this idea that all my actions were fortifying my place in the world. Chasing status and success. I never had much time for reflection. Maybe I was scared to ask questions of myself. But when something like that happens, you're left with only questions. Why me? Why Kate? How do I make sense of this? The thing is, though, that day changed my life. 
Not only because of the tragedy of losing Kate like that. It was what I saw that changed me. Forever. I saw them. Little people. They were real. They were angels. I've asked myself over and over why it was only me that could see them. And I can only answer that somehow God wanted me to know. Wanted me to know that Kate was safe. She was okay and that he was going to look after her. He must have sent some of them to take her soul and to show me that we are being looked after and that we are loved always. The angels didn't look like angels. They were like tiny little miniature people, not large imposing figures. They were just these little people with wings. They had an aura around them like candlelight. And they did not speak to me or make any sound. But they surrounded Kate's body on the floor. They were busy. They looked like they knew exactly what they needed to do. And as they flew around her, the little wings beating, they created a kind of light that surrounded Kate's body. I just sat there watching them. And as the light faded and the angels disappeared, I knew that Kate was gone. I've never seen the angels again, and I wonder if I ever will. I wonder if one day they'll come for me. When I said earlier there's two me's, the one after Kate died is who I am now. I gave up my career and stopped chasing success. I stopped all my little plans and schemes because I'm part of a bigger plan. I know that I've seen God's work in practice. I volunteer for Samaritans now. I answer the phone to people that are asking big questions of themselves. And I just listen. I try to let them know that it's okay. That we are all okay. I go for long walks and I think about Kate and her life in Paris that never came to be. I try to honour her and thank God for taking care of her. One day, a few weeks after Kate died, I was thinking about her and the little angels that I saw that day. I was standing in my kitchen and I was contemplating calling my boss to say that I'd be giving up my job. It was morning and the sun had not yet come out. And as I stood there in the kitchen, asking questions, asking for some kind of sign of what to do, I saw the light again, like a warm candlelight that surrounded me in the dark. I wanted to reach out and hold it and breathe it in. But after a few seconds it was gone. I knew it was her. It was Kate. Letting me know that she loved me and that she was okay. There is a light that never goes out. <laughs>